How's it going? It's going great. Good. So I read an article where you were talking about this whole last couple of months and how crazy it's been. Yeah. You made a point of saying that like the end of the day going to bed for you has become like the sacred time and you have like a ritualistic way that you go to bed. Yes. I want to know what that's all about. It's watching you late at night. <laughs> On Turner Classic Movies. Last night I watched Notorious. Ooh, yeah. So good. Hitchcock in black and white. It was Absolutely. Whole... Yeah. So yeah. what do you do? You get all cozy. Take a really good hot shower, get little snacks, get my, you know, water, and then like I spray the pillows with the aromatherapy and all that good stuff. I pull out the iPad. I click on the icon, watch TCM. I scroll, 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 scroll. And I'm like, that one. And there you are. I love it. My favorite thing. It truly is. You just made my year. And next time <laughs> I do it, I'm going to go do a little deal with Carol Burnett. Oh my God, I will lose it. Please do it. <laughs> okay, fine. Such a fan of you. Thank you. I'm a fan of yours. And, and as I said in, in an interview I did, I mean, I remember watching, I got to see The Holdovers in June, a couple months mm. before it premiered at the fest festivals, and I was like halfway through, I'm like, this woman is a virtuoso. Oh, like, I, we gotta get her, you. so thank you for being here. Thank you. So, for anyone who's not familiar with kind of the behind the scenes of The Holdovers, this is a movie that you shot over two years ago, it was uh, a purchased at the Toronto Film Festival a year Secretly. and a half ago. Yes. Secretly. It wasn't like... Uh, I couldn't... I, I was at the Toronto Film Festival for another movie, and Alexander was like, I'm here. And I was like, well, can I come and see the movie? <laughs> nope. Wow. So people, like, buyers saw it, and I was just like, well, hope you like it. And the... The company that bought it, Focus Features, decided yeah. even though it's done and it's September, we're not going to put it out because we really want it to like make sure we can nurture it. So we're going to wait a whole other year. Yeah. What has it? What was it like for you to wait that whole extra year, knowing you had done this performance? Well, you know, um, Alexander has very good taste. It's funny you say this. We were shooting one of the last scenes, and it was us, like when we're all in the car driving around. So in order to make that happen. It would be me and Paul in the front and Alexander in the back, scrunched in the back because he really wanted to film it and having a camera and like getting the back view of us. And so it was super quiet. And the whole movie was really intimate. But that day in particular, <laughs> we were in between takes and I was like, I really look forward to eating pasta with you guys in Venice next year. And I was like, Alexander, all I want to do is be on a boat in Venice, stepping out, and it didn't happen. And I said, you know, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. No, but Focus Features has amazing taste. So when I found out it was Focus, I was like, oh, uh, whatever y'all want to do, like they asked me, but, uh, you know, <laughs> extremely good taste that I was like, they'll know, they'll know the right time. And then we got hit with a strike. But it was kind of perfect because the strike ended November 8th, and we release in theaters November 10th. Perfect. Yeah. It was a blessing in disguise. It happened the way it was meant to. Absolutely. So because I do work for TCM, I was really intrigued to learn that you, so Mary, the character, smokes. You do not. Do not, no. And you turn to Betty Davis to Betty teach you Davis, how to Sunset Boulevard. You know when she's sitting in her living room and she has her back towards the camera and she, it's like the... I don't know, the credenza, and she, he's like by the door, right? He's like, I'm leaving, and she's being really dramatic, and she just has the cigarette going, and it's just this smoke. And I was like, I wanna make that happen. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really binged on TCM Heavy Heavy um, to, you know, I, that was my smoking teachers. I love it. Mm -hmm. And then as people may be aware, it was important to you, Mary as a cook, 
in in the yeah. you, you wanted to cook, you wanted to actually cook. Yes. Did you get to like, I mean, the rest of whatever she was making was gonna be in the script. You didn't get to see. Yes and no. Uh, so uh, it just said like, she's cooking. So we were like, okay, let's do oatmeal. I don't suggest that. Because after many takes, oatmeal congeals, and that thing is like plaster. And then you're doing a take and you're like, Ugh, and it doesn't move. Uh, so I'll rethink that one next time. Um, we did oatmeal, we did soup, I made lunch for them, and then it was like the Sunday, uh, the Christmas dinner. And so Alexander and I came up with the menu, um, and we were lucky because the, the HBO series Julia yes. uh, was happening, or I think it like just finished, and so they have special, um, prop people in particular for like food. So they were on that show, so they came on our show. And I love to cook, so then I really got to like geek out with them. Um, and what was really cool is I was like, guys, can you please not eat today for the day that we shot the Christmas? Oh, right. Yeah, and I was like, I just, what if we just eat in real life? on camera, and so we did. So we didn't eat that day, and then when they shot it, we ate a whole complete meal. Wow. And then at some point, they said cut, and we were still eating. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was dinner. So if, if I were to come over to your house, what would you cook for me? Ooh, what kind of stuff do you like? Anything you're gonna make. Mmm, I have a good roasted chicken recipe. I could really cook anything, but I love to ask my friends what they like. I like anything spicy. Ooh, okay. Then maybe I might do like a mole chicken and some rice and some grilled roasted vegetables. Like roast them first and then put them on the grill for the grill marks. Yes. Yum, right? I want all of that. And then some like street corn. That could be really fun. Okay, great. Come you, over. You name the day. Um, the character of Mary Lamb mm -hmm. is obviously very meaningful to anyone who's gone through loss or grief in their lives. Yeah. What have been some things that people have said to you once they've seen this movie and want to talk to you about it? Um, a lot of people have um, either written to me or messaged me. Um, the one, it's the most recent that I think really stands out. I was on a flight um, just a week ago and I was sitting and I, uh, first of all, uh, I'm like weird. I like watching people watch. I, I know, it's a little voyeuristic. I like watching people watch TV on airplanes. I do that. Let me finish that sentence. <laughs> I didn't finish it. I like watching people watch TV or whatever movie on airplanes. It's always fascinating to me. It's like this weird little game that I'm like, I wonder what they're gonna watch. And it always surprises me. There's also something I think, something very interesting about the being forced to be cut off from the world, so to speak, by being on a plane. Anyways, so I'm sitting here, the lady was one seat up, but on like the window seat, yeah. so I could see her clear shot to what she was watching. And she was watching the holdovers. And I was so nervous. <laughs> and I was like, does she like it? I don't know. Um, and literally, I had to go to the bathroom, and I was like, no! And so I had to walk past her, and I, when I walked past her, she was like, <laughs> and I was like, no, no, no! I hope they're good tears. And then I went to the bathroom, and I came back, and I like, <laughs> like this, to walk back, and she was like, oh! <laughs> Isn't that weird? That's probably weird. You're like, in this little bubble, and then you're like, what the, ah! <laughs> But, so she came, she came, uh, like, I, I was like, oh, thank you, thank you. And I started walking past her, and she grabbed my arm, and she was like, nope. And so then I walked back, and she just hugged me, and I just hugged her. And it was so, I, that's, that's stuff you dream of. And she was like, she, it, which is crazy, she was like, my daughter, her grandson had just passed. No. And she was like, my, I know, she goes, you did too good of a job that I know my daughter is not going to be ready for this. But when she is, she said, I've seen it four times already. And I told her, this is gonna be the thing that's gonna help you. And I was like, what? But it's, it's you can't. That's why you do it. 
That's, that's exactly why I do it. The movie yeah. came to life for her on the airplane. Yes. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so Ava, much. Ava, enjoy Randolph. Thank you, everyone. Stay there for one sec. So much fun. All right, coming up next, the wonderful Greta Lee. So let's watch a scene from Past Lives.